It's called a friends exercise. Ask them the simple question, why are we friends? And they're gonna look at you like you're insane. And they'll start describing you. I don't know, you're always there for me, I trust you, um, I, I, like you're, you're good to me, and you play devil's advocate. That's just the definition of a friend. What specifically would, is it about me that I know you'd be there for me no matter what? And they'll go through this a few times. They're gonna hate you, it's gonna hurt sometimes. Don't help them, don't let anybody help them, and eventually they will give up. And they will start describing themselves. And I got goosebumps. In fact, I'm getting them right now. Mm. What they will do is they will put into words the value you have in their life, and you will have an emotional response. You will either well up with tears or you will get goosebumps, and that's how you know you found your why. What are the challenges to trust? Because let's think, like in the past, uh, ways in which trust was uh, forgiven, given ahead of time, was by, by people having a, 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 a commitment to shared propositions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, you know we, we all go together and we, you know, we all say the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed. And that means, right, uh, your public declaration of these things engendered my trust in you before I knew you. It helped get, it, it, it forgave, it, it, and I mean, I'm playing on the word forgive here, but to give ahead of time, right? right. It forgave trust. Now, the thing is, we're entering into a space where we're, it's massively pluralistic and where commitments to uh, sets of propositions that we're going to hold to in um, an unquestioning fashion, that's not part of how this space is working at all, right? right? So the question is, given that, many of the, given that many of the previous ways in which human beings have created widespread networks of trust, what are the alternative mechanisms by which we will bring trust into existence in the way we, you and I have been talking about? So this is what I hear you saying um, in your, as, so I love the knowing. I wish that we could bring the conversation about the kinds of knowing into the design of church. Like this is what church is for, is to help us train in knowing God and one another through these like realms. And I, so many people could say, well, they don't actually exist as separate. Like, totally, I get that. But if you don't recognize their sort of unique elements, then there's a good chance that you're just not going to give them the attention that they deserve. But this is what I heard you saying. I heard you saying that, um, well, maybe, maybe I should say it this way. I want you to hear me say, I know you love me. How could I possibly know that? How could I possibly know Paul Vanderclay, a person I've never seen or spoke to in real life? I mean, this is the closest we've ever come. I know that you love me, that you would sacrifice for me personally. Like in a way you kind of have just by allowing a rando like me to, to take your time, right? I also know that, 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 that as insane as it sounds, not only do I know you love me, but I know you trust me. How could I possibly know that? And I know it deeply, I know it. And I know why. And I think that maybe, particularly in just this last uh, video that you made, you have sort of formulated a way of conveying that that is similar to what I'm doing to you right now. Because I'm saying this to you, you are seeing proof that it's reciprocal. How can, how can we do that? What is the magic that's happening yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing that I appreciate, just to maybe to end it on a personal note, which I also said, I think in a comment to the conversation with DJ Schindler, I, and that was really like, you now we always talk about these things like okay do they make sense yes or no and i really appreciate it when you said like yeah but you know you mentioned like these schindler actually thinks we have to go back to going to church in some sense like that authority in that sense is important uh you mentioned that in, that in, the, in the conversation and then you said like okay but what do you think then about the john verveke practices you know like because you're friends with him and then it was like well it's like you know we're gonna have to see how that pans out but mostly i trust him it's like and that was so beautiful to me that i was like and and i have that too with john that i'm like Oh yeah, I, I I trust him to do the right thing. Like if it doesn't work out, it'll 
become clear. And I was like, yes, that's it. That's precisely what we're doing in this little corner. Like we're building up trust amongst each other. Uh, and then maybe sometimes it isn't justified and then, you know, you don't fit into the corner. But essentially, if you're constantly opening yourself up for criticism, but not just criticism, like also like relationship, right? Like we, uh, we have, we build fellowship together and then it's like, yeah, like do whatever, like go join whatever denomination you like. Like, you know, you, you could be a Christian, you sh cannot be a Christian, but we basically trust you in some sense. And that's sort of this implicit ethic that is building underneath that. So I'm, I'm kind of curious to hear your reflections on that because I thought that was a beautiful comment by, by him now. Yeah. The, what, what you have when these mediating structures are sort of liquefied by the chaos that's going on, what you really have are relationships of trust where mm. you look across the way and say, I trust this person. And I trust this person, not because they're saying all the things I want to hear, but because I've been with them and I've watched them, mm. I've watched them live. Yeah. And, you know, no, none of us are completely trustworthy, but we get a sense of what we can trust people for and what we can't. And it's all that detailed, real life connection that finally um that that you really need when um when chaos reigns so yeah anyway. yeah yeah what's that so that's paul's last words is, is go to church you know find an estuary or at least some club like a knitting club or something like you know be connected with people build uh, your relationships families. with people that's right another big question is how would we know that we could trust them and this is, I feel like, yeah, uh, it's, this is a similar question to basically the entire gospel of John is, can we trust this Jesus guy or not? Yeah. <laughs> it is, is really seemingly the main thrust of the gospel where there are all these people who are like, I think he has a demon. I think he's a Samaritan. I yeah. think, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And someone, well, has a demon ever done the wonders that he's done? Or at the Samaritan woman at the well, could this guy be the Messiah? I mean, he told me everything that I'd ever done. You know, like there, there's this constant struggle where people seem to realize that this Jesus person is of a higher order. <laughs> I'll yes. just leave it at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Than they're used to interacting with. Yeah. And then the question is, is should we trust him or not? And right. I think that is a similar I, we'll have the exact same conundrum, even if we were as successful as we would hope to be with raising artificially intelligent sages. So how would you interact with that question? First of all, I think that's right. And that's what I meant about, you know, the communication would be as fraught as it was with the human beings that we deem to be enlightened. Um, and I think the issue of trust um, is there. Of course, uh, we face versions of that everywhere. Um, and this was one of Hegel's great um, uh, tasks. He was trying, I mean, uh, Brandom's huge tome on the phenomenology, Hegel's phenomenology is called the spirit of trust. Uh, because how do, we, how do we get to a place where rationality and trust are come together? So it is rational for us to trust, but that doesn't mean we're doing, we're not, doesn't mean we're proving, we're still trusting. And, and, like, and then you have this mm -hmm. going on and, it, and it's like, Trust can't be the seeking of certainty, or it's not trust. That's just that's just proof, and that's conviction, and that's to reduce trust to belief and trust to conviction. And I, and so, uh, and 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 that's, I to to your point, I think you see that in the Gospels. There's people that want proof, and it's like no, that won't do. What, what you want is trust, right? And and what you're seeking for won't won't give you what you're actually you're you're formulating the problem the wrong way, kind of thing. And the Gospels, especially like you said, John really uh, wrestles with that. And and it, and it's like, well, why did we? How did we come to trust the Buddha? How did we come to trust Jesus? And um, and again, you get this, the, um, the best answer I have is sort of this Hegelian autopoetic, the, 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 the horizon, the best optimal grip that does living by the lights and the logos of Jesus reliably, individually and collectively increase religio, mm -hmm. right? And a uh, lots of people say, yes, and I take them very, very seriously. Same thing for people who follow the Buddha. Um, and now the skeptic 
can always say with complete logical legitimacy, but this could all just be the fraud. And this is this is why I I don't I won't I choose not to integrate with people. No, in, not integrate. Interact with people. That was a weird slip. Interact with people who pronounce other other. Well, yours is a demon, and mine is like th that's that 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 that's that that's a fool's game, right? It's like well. What's the standard you use to trust your sage? Then I'm allowed to use the same standard for trusting my sage. You can't, you can't, you can't have it both ways, right? And so um, I think, and I, and that doesn't mean that there might be important fundamental differences between Jesus and the Buddha. I'm not that mm -hmm. th those are not contradictory to say those two things together. But what I'm saying is, how do we trust them? And it's like, well, uh, you know, the test of time, the test of history, the test of cross-cultural, do they reliably, across many contexts of culture, history, time, environment, uh, reliably afford people enhancing religio, right? Um, yeah, they seem to. That's it. That makes them trustworthy. Uh, you get You learn a lot more about each other and about yourself if it's one person and then you're, but it's not a, it's not a debate or it's a, it's not even a dialogue, right? It's a, it's a reciprocal process of asking, they say something and then you ask a question to get them to clarify their, their thinking and their articulation of the problem. And then in, you keep just repeating that process and it sort of, it draws the person out for themselves and for the, for everyone. And then you, you kind of just learn about each other in that way. And I think that's so much more meaningful than the, you know, the debate or the whatever. And that's, um, I think it's really the trust. Like that's a lot of people, especially, so I've been thinking about this with the, the whole like IDW conversation that went on like the other day in the discord and they all put truth as their top value, but I don't think that it's right. I think trust has to be the top value. Mm. And that's something that I've noticed in our meetup group and with the discord is that because everyone is coming to it through Jordan Peterson and then Paul and, and mostly people who are hardcore uh, devotees and have gone through all the classes, gone through, you know, a year of Paul's videos, like, these you're you feel safe and comfortable that okay these people are are upstanding and, and they're striving yeah. towards the good and, and that so then you you don't feel like anyone's going to try to even when you get into uh you know heated disagreement or somebody you know maybe pokes a little too hard at something then it's like but you know where it's that it's like they just made a mistake right but they weren't there was no malice behind it and so i think everyone feels that in the group and in the discord and i think that is without the trust then you won't get you won't get the good conversation you won't get the the uh, meaningful connections and interactions and that's why you you need that that like cohesive element and I think that's what that's what it is. It, you have this filtering mechanism, and then that builds that that gives you this foundation of trust. And then from there, you can start to build um, more. But think, without that, you have nothing. You you have nothing because everyone's just in it for themselves. Trust is assumed, but tested. Uh, where people of different opinions come together and sort things out constructively. And that's the best test of all of truth. You said, for example, that they, they come together in trust. Yes. So, so that I would say that, so that there's a precondition for the scientific inquiry to occur even at the level of dialogue. Yes. And the precondition is that we can trust, what are, what are we trusting, do you think? Are we trusting what are we, are we, the good, in that situation, what is it that allows for trust? It's the goodwill that we normally assume in a civilized world. 
When you and I walk down the street, we assume that the people that we see are all around us, most of whom are total strangers to us, we assume that they don't mean us any harm. We, okay. we, okay. Uh, um, I like the way Paul Seabright has put this uh, in his book, the, uh, uh, the Company of Strangers. If you put a whole lot of unrelated chimpanzees in a large room together, they would be terrified. They would be screaming and th they would be unable to sit there calmly. And I sometimes point this out when I'm in a large auditorium and there's hundreds of people, none of them related. I said, is anybody here scared to death? No, 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 we're not. We're, we, we trust each other. That human trust is the key to civilization and to science, and it's under attack right now. Mutually accelerating disclosure generates trust. And so, like, like you said, when we're in, when we're creating a culture around the weird way in which your face and my face are so close and so large, but not, 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 like if you were this large in my visual field, like we'd be having a, like my physical visual field, we'd be having sort of a, even if we, we like each other and I like you, but we'd be having, there'd be all this machinery going, oh no, right? But there's something about the medium and then the, there seems to be a, a cultural grammar that's springing up around it that says, well, one of the things we can do here Right? One of the things we can do here is that intimacy can be exacted uh, for a kind of slowly, uh, well, like, and there's got to be wisdom in this. There has to be finesse, but a finesse, mutually accelerating disclosure so that trust is possible uh, between people. I think it ties back to what I, 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 I briefly sketched at, at the beginning of the conversation. What we are committed to is this act of translation mm -hmm. in a way that we realize that whatever we say we don't know how that you know is perceived and it's always the sender receiver model problem around here mm -hmm. but at the same time I have the feeling that we are building trust in that kind of translation mm -hmm. that if you say that he says what it is I trust you to be correct on that. And I trust this community to call out anyone who's playing an unfair game about this. So basically we are committed to, um, you, we judge them by their fruits and the fruits are the result of a conscious act of trying to translate something that I have been thinking about, that others have been listening to, that someone has watched or read. And that already is very important just for the uh, building community. Because that's, that's another insane uh, rabbit hole that you can go into. George Steiner. Um, yeah. Insane. <laughs> After Babel. Um, currently watching a uh, documentary, reading the book. It's just, it's amazing. But there he basically says that different languages may be evolved because you know these groups did not want to have anyone in those groups it's like in group out group behavior and what we're currently doing is we're you know tearing down those walls by saying yeah i know we talk differently i know we listen differently but we still want to see each other in the eye and try to talk to each other even if we are not sure that the translating act will be successful but we put trust into that act because we trust the individuals on the other side of the wall that will that they will take up what we say and they will do something good out of it.